Welcome to the finale of the Opinions on Design series. Starting with Monster vs. Godzilla, who is in my top five. Like, I've always liked the sort of crocodilian approach to Godzilla. And, like, I think Legendary Goji was the start of that trend. I like how, like, bear-like he looks. And I think that amplifies, like, how, like, weighted he looks. He looks like he could actually be 355 feet tall. I like that head especially. I like the bear influence. And, like, I like how his tail ends in a whip. Like, uh, sauropod tails do. And, uh, yeah. The Mudos have to be my favorite example of the clover body type. What I mean by that is knuckle walking, uh, elbows held up high, extra arms on the, uh, on the chest. You know, that type. The red glows on both individuals' claws look really good and really unique. And I love the detail that two that the two biggest limbs on the male evolved to be wings for the uh, for the female i like this one too i like how like tall and powerful she looks and they're just really cool looking kong looks really cool i like how he's not just a gorilla like in the 2005 version but he's more like a Bigfoot or an Australopithecus, and I really like that. And if he didn't look nice enough, he has a new Viking beard in Godzilla vs. Kong. The skull crawlers look pretty cool with their sort of skeletal aesthetic, their uh, Mosasaur-looking head, and the fact that they only have two limbs in the front and no limbs in the back. That last aspect was actually inspired by the two-legged lizard that tried to eat Jack Driscoll in the original King Kong film. Another neat little detail is the fact that there are actually differences in appearance between the normal skull crawlers and the skull devil. First off, you can see, like you can see that like the skull part blends in perfectly into the rest of the body. With the Skull Devil, there's this little crown thing that you can see. It looks really cool. Also, you can see that the Skull Crawler just has normal elbows. But the Skull Devil has these really cool looking spikes coming out of their elbows. That, like, if they were smarter, they could actually use that as weapons. Just elbowing Kong in the chin, probably impaling him and killing him. They didn't do that, though, and they died because of it. I like the larval Mafra from King of the Monsters. For one, she finally doesn't look like a turd. And also, she looks much more like a caterpillar would. But honestly, I don't like how the face looks. It looks more like the predator than a baby form of anything. The Imago looks really neat. I like how she looks way more capable of actually fighting hand-to-hand -hand than other Mothras. It's also pretty cool that she can glow. And, unlike Heisei, she doesn't have to rely on freaking beams all the time. Ghidorah looks absolutely amazing in King of the Monsters, but like... I don't, I, I don't really like how they just went with the Heisei design. Sure, the faces look really cool, but once again, they scrapped the the mane. And this time, there's not really a real reason for it. I mean, it's CGI now, so you can make CG shadows. So you can include the mane. And with most of King Ghidorah's concept art containing the mane and sometimes the crescents, like, there is a high chance that they could have actually went with the Showa design, but yet they didn't. They went with the frankly overused Heisei design. And if you look hard enough, you can even see that the mains made it into the toys. Look, 
Those aren't horns. That's a mane. I'll have to say that I preferred the SDCC design over the one that made it into the film. I mean, that middle head looks really cool. To close out the main four, Rodan looks absolutely amazing. And I think and I personally think that all the feature Rodan designs that Toho and other studios make should be based off of this one. Look at his head, it looks so amazing and eagle-like. I love it. Here's a better look. If I had to nitpick about one thing in Rodan's design, I would probably prefer if he had the, like, false feathers part of his uh, maquette. Everything else looks absolutely amazing. I really like how Scylla looks. She, I mean, she's an ammonite spider crab. Like, who wouldn't think that's very interesting and unique? Methuselah is probably the most underappreciated titan out there. I mean, like, a living mountain sounds really cool. And, like, his design perfectly blends that in with this hulking ram alligator titan that looks really cool. Also, he's basically the grandpa of the kaiju, so I'm not really... I'm not really sure why literally no one has used him in any sort of, like, fanfics yet in that personality. And to end off the... King of the Monsters, Titans, we have Behemoth, the fan favorite, who I'll actually have to say is my least favorite. It's not because I actually hate Behemoth, it's just that his, um, his components are less diverse and interesting than, uh, you know, Methuselah and so on. I mean, Methuselah is a mixture between a bovine and a crocodile, a prehistoric crocodile, while Scylla is an ammonite and a spider crab combined. When compared to a mammoth sloth, the mammoth sloth isn't really as, I should say, diverse in terms of components. But like, it's not that, like I said, it's not that he's bad. I actually consider um, all of the King of the Monsters Titans as equal when it comes to a uh, design. And, like, I find them equally interesting and good. You thought this would be the end, but no. If you don't want to deal with spoilers for, uh, for Godzilla vs. Kong, you should probably leave. I like how Nozuki looks. Like, there's a very snake-like build to it, but on the other hand, you can see that uh, there's, like, fins or wings, maybe, gliding wings, obviously. Like, they'd have to be, like, or actual arms to actually flap and fly. And then, like, if you look closely, I think that's actually an arm. So I think Nozuki has arms, too. I also like this uh, Mechagodzilla. I like the the claw machine hands and like I also like this the like sort of skeletal vibe it has with like the really skinny uh structure and especially that tail. It looks like a like the spinal tail that skeletons of tailed creatures have. And I like it. And to end off this this series we have a design that I forgot to add in the last episode. Tokyo SOS Mothra. I can honestly consider this one of my favorite Mothra designs. It's like an, she's like an upgraded version of the Showa prop, and I love it. 